Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so we are going to present you the, the proposed uh, revision of the QRD template, which is uh, mainly focused on the improvement of the package leaflet. So just to give a bit of uh, background uh, on the QR, QRD template for human products, um, this was created in 1996. Uh, right at the beginning of the EMA creation. Um, the content of the QRD template is bound by the legislation. All the requirements come from the directive. And the package leaflet, as uh, we all know it uh, today, um, it, it roughly it comes from 1998. The first two years, it had a bit of a different structure, but the current structure that we know today is from, uh, from a revision that there was in 1998. We tried to keep the QRD template very stable um, as far as possible, because uh, of course, um, industry is not very happy when we make updates because they need to update all their product information annexes. So all in all, it's been um, it's been there for 27 years, and we've had like 10 major versions with some small ones in between. The last major revision was in 2011, um, when we we had a like a multi-stakeholder workshop with all the interested parties, and we revamped a bit the, the package leaflet already and uh, made uh, some improvements. Um, but of course, that was um, many years ago, and now we need to we need to do that exercise again. There, you have the for those that are not familiar with the template, you have the link to the latest uh, annotated template that contains uh, all the guidance um, for each of the sections. So, what are the drivers of the of the of the revision? Why a revision now? Um, as Juan said, I guess because you've been discussing this uh, for for a few years, you are all familiar with the Commission's report on shortcomings in product information that was issued in 2017, um, and it um, concluded in a few recommendations um, aimed at improving the product information. The first one that was prioritized and it's already ongoing is the electronic product information. Um, and that will already have an impact on the provision of package leaflets. So that is, uh, that is uh, one of the recommendations that was implemented at the time uh, shortly after the report was issued. However, because we, because of Brexit, then we went into BCP, um, all the other recommendations were put on hold. And now that uh, we are out of PCP, the pandemic uh, has eased uh, and we have more resources, um, it's time to take on some of those recommendations. And the ones that focus on the package leaflet are this, uh, of course, room for improvement, uh, the need to amend uh, guidelines and templates to enhance readability of the package leaflet. And then there was a recommendation in the Commission's report to uh, explore the possibility of including a section in the package leaflet to uh, gather key information for the patient or the user. Um, besides this uh, main driver, we also have been collecting um, comments and experience here at the agency and also in the network, because you know that NCAs uh, also review product information. So with all those years of experience, uh, we, we can uh, input some, some comments. Then we have a lot of feedback from readability companies, which at the end of the day, if the, it is the voice of patients and consumers and healthcare professionals, which are the users uh, of the leaflet. Then um, industry has been working a lot on this. They, they presented to us, um, we have a platform, a QRD uh, industry platform, and where industry presented the work that they have been doing on, on trying to improve the package leaflet. And there are very, very um, useful proposals uh, that could be implemented. So basically, we, I mean, we are now ready to, to embark on this, on this uh, job. 
and which are the changes that we that we we think we need. Uh, the first one is the shortening of the package leaflets because, of course, it's um, far too long. Uh, this will have some um, benefits like less paper, environmental gains. It will improve readability because the font will be larger. It will facilitate multilingual leaflets and it hopefully will motivate patients and users to read the leaflets. We also want to increase flexibility. However, we cannot forget that uh, we are bound by the legislation and there are things that we cannot simply take out from a leaflet. Um, the intention is also to improve the patient friendliness uh, of the language. You know, there are several um, standard statements that can be reviewed to make them more patient friendly. Um, we want to focus more on the on patient relevant content, what is important and relevant to the user. Then, as I said, we will explore the inclusion of this key information section. And um, we've also got a lot of feedback that we should focus more on benefit uh, and more positive me messages rather than negative information only. So which is the project outline? Um, we started in June by creating uh, a subgroup of the QRD group because the, the QRD template, the owner of the QRD template is the QRD group. So uh, we created a small subgroup of nine member states that are gonna lead the drafting. Uh, then we presented the project to the EMA management, got the approval. Um, next step, and that's why we are here, is to identify representatives from your working parties to be part of the subgroup because we think that you are a key stakeholder and need to be with us draft, drafting, the, um, drafting the template. Um, once the group is complete, we will prepare an initial proposal that has to be discussed with the larger, with the entire QRD group. Um, we will keep the industry uh, informed. We will have discussions with them because, as I said, they have worked a lot on this and we need to also work in partnership with them. Um, the intention when we have a mature draft is to release it for public consultation. Then we will assess the comments received we will prepare a proposal, and then we intend to have a, a workshop with all the stakeholders for discussion of um, as many ideas as possible. And then we will go to the QRG group again because they need to endorse the final template, and then we will publish it for implementation, hopefully uh, by the end of next year. So for this QRD subgroup, the composition, as I said, it's mainly nine QRD members. Um, then it's us from the labeling office, Alexios and myself. We have liaised with uh, Juan's uh, department and we've got one medical writer nominated. And then I think uh, Kasia is gonna be the patient liaison in the group. And then from your working parties, we would like to have uh, one representative from the patients, one from the consumers, and one from the healthcare professionals. Um, but I'll leave it to Ivan and Maria maybe to, to, to talk about that. Then um, we will have meetings with this, uh, with this group, as many as we need. We will exchange also written comments if needed. And then, as I said, we will discuss the proposals of this group with uh, industry uh, via the platform we have with them. We will keep the QRG group informed via the QRG plenary meetings. Uh, then we will assess uh, the, the comments from the public consultation, the same uh, from the stakeholders workshop next year, and then we will present it to the QRG uh, group for endorsement. So what is expected from the, from the members of the subgroup is the attendance to all the meetings of this uh, subgroup. We, we think they are gonna be monthly or maybe every six weeks or seven as needed, uh, and they will be virtual via Teams. 
Um, we will then have the meetings with industry. They are also uh, virtual and we will try to keep them in the context of the platform, which means that uh, we have like three or four a year. And then we intend to have this uh, workshop that, uh, all, of course, the subgroup members need to attend in person at the agency, hopefully next year. And the date will be confirmed as soon as it's arranged. Then you need to, of course, contribute to the exchange of comments uh, in writing if there is a need for that. We would ask um, the representatives of the working parties to get familiar with the QRD templates and the reference documents and the legal requirements. You've got there the link where you can find all this information because, as I said, we are bound by the legislation. It's not that we can do whatever we like. So all the people participating in this drafting need to be familiar with that. And then, of course, you will have to go back to your uh, respective groups to gather the views um, of your peers to make it uh, as inclusive as possible and to reflect uh, everyone's opinions in the discussions. And last but not least, of course, raise as many proposals for improvement as possible based on your experience and your expertise. Uh, think outside the box and then we will see how to accommodate that within the boundaries of the of the legislation and happy to take uh, any questions.